All right, folks, we want to talk about combining normal random variables, not just any random variables, but specifically normal. And the cool thing about this is any combination of independent required normal random variables generates another normal random variable. OK, and so all those rules that we talked about earlier apply and and we get to go and do stuff like this. And we can calculate all the probabilities we want. Because if it was normal before, you add, multiply it, add something, normal after. You can even predict the new standard deviation. If you add two random variables, and this is really what this section is talking about, okay? Obviously, if you transform them, but if you add them, not only can you add their means, can you add their variances if they're independent, but they will be normal afterwards. Okay, normal before, normal after. Awesome, that's so powerful and helpful for us. So let's look at a quick example, okay? Um, looking at history, the math portion of the SATs, average is 529, standard deviation 75.7. Verbal, mean 474, standard deviation of 79.8. Select two students at random. This is important that they're two different students that are randomly selected, so that way they're independent of each other, okay? If I took the same student, then the probabilities, because these are not independent for that same student, we wouldn't be able to use these, the, the combined distributions. So we select two students at random, let X denote the first student's math score, and Y denote the second student's verbal score. What's the probability that the first student's math score is higher than the second student's verbal score? Now, if you look, I, I created these two distributions. This one's centered at 529. This one's centered at 474. And I lined them up with the number 500 here. I lined these up vertically. So like, I don't know, if, if I'm over here in X and you're over here in Y, you beat me. But if you're over here in Y, you lose. If I'm over here in X, if you're in either of those two Y's, you beat me. But if you're over here on the Y's, you actually still lose. Okay. So like, I don't know where this guy is in X. He can be in any of those places. I don't know where this guy is in Y. He could be in any of those places. How do you talk about when you're above the other in this crazy picture? Well, the trick is that if we create another random variable, Z, where we take x minus y. So take all the x's minus all the y's. All right. Then we're creating another distribution that we call z. And if z is greater than zero, then it means that my x minus y led to a positive number, in which case x was bigger than y. And so these two probabilities are logically equivalent for this new random variable z. But now we need to make sure we follow all the rules of combining my random variables. So the means act exactly as you're told. So we would just subtract the two means. And you see that right here. So the mean of Z is just the mean of X minus the mean of Y, which is 55, okay? That points are 55 points higher on average. The standard deviations, we need to combine the variances. The cumulative variability in, oh, that should be X here and Y, sorry, typo. Mu, or, variance of x plus variance of y. So the variance of x, this is the cumulative variability in x. We add it to the cumulative variability in y, okay? Notice we would run into problems immediately if we tried to subtract their variances because we'd have a negative number. And then when I tried to square root it, there'd be errors. Or if they had exactly the same standard deviation, would it make sense that combining these would get rid of, get rid of all the variability and the variances would just cancel and go down to zero? No, we're accumulating variability. The more variables you throw in, we're talking about two tests instead of one, the more variability there should be. And so we accumulate 100% of X's variability, which is right here. I squared the standard deviation plus Y standard deviation squared gets us this. And then I take the square root of it and we get the variability, the standard deviation of 110. And now we say, given this distribution, normal, with mean of 55 and standard deviation of 110, what's the probability that Z is greater than zero? And I have that right over here. So if you take a look at this, I'll make it a little bit bigger for you, I hope. All right. Mean is 55, standard deviation is zero, um, or standard deviation is 110, probability that X, my distribution, is greater than this X value of zero, and you see that it's 69.146 percent of the time. Okay. So um, combining random variables, 
If you're combining two independent normal random variables, they will be a new normal random variable. And then you can do your normal calculations with it. And you combine them the same way as we did with the other stuff. So good luck and farewell.